Ciao ragazzi, benvenuti al canale Spazio Gaming. In questo e nei prossimi video mostrerò il gameplay di Metaphor, Re Fantasio. Quindi se volete seguire la narrazione della storia, lo svolgersi delle missioni, dei legami, gli scontri con i boss e lo sviluppo degli archetipi, questo è il canale da seguire. Really? Stay there. All right then. Now then. Good of you to come. I 
found new power. again. What now? What are we on about? You're not serious. Oh, you wound me! Thanks. <laughs> a minute. No. <laughs> Welcome. Dear me! It's... Can we talk? Thank you, kind... Grand Cathedral, why... Why now? Oh, 
there. Can we talk? Thank. Why did this happen? Well, I'll not know. How did this happen? Prop races. Hello there. I. Uh, isn't that? Let's see. Yep. It's quite fresh. Hello there.
will be quite enough. And what is it you want? What now? Is on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Well then, I...
right. Certainly. Well, well. <laughs> Surely you jest. Nice to meet you. Sorry. Pardon me. Hmm? Very well. Yes.
now. I'm here. Oh ho! What do you want to do? My thanks. Well then. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. on sale right now.
what you need. You're not serious. Oh, me. That damn thing. Definitely. Sure, but... I feel more courageous when I'm with you. Huh! Let's head back. Coming down. 
Why not? Rain? Oh, I am great. You've come at a good time. Hey, listen. <sighs> that will be quite enough. This is the pit. All right, then. Let's go! Is there any shelter from this? Closure A, oh, closure A. I love it. How far? Just loiter in a storm. Now then. Now then. Listen. Why? Why? You. That's right. Hmm. I see now. Whoa! Utterly naive. Speaking of... As it is. Yet still they oppose me. Farewell. <laughs> C 
Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. The announcement is soon. No. I love it. 
Have my thanks. Disaster was averted. Right then. Today's Forden's big announcement. Wonder what he's planning. I guess the church has to have some reaction to all that stuff the king said. Whatever it is, Luis won't be able to just ignore it. This might be a day that goes down in history. Gents, lend me your ears. Sanctifex Forden has spoken. The giant face in the sky, the massive rocks appearing throughout the land, and the mysterious voice claiming to be the past king. The Sanctus Church has officially recognized these happenings as the will of His Royal Majesty. <gasps> so it really is His Majesty. And so, as His Majesty has decreed, Whoever has gained the greatest trust of the people by the day of decision shall be our new king. This is a historic moment, good citizens. It's revolutionary. It's unprecedented. No matter who you are, you can take the throne. Anyone? Even me? If, and this is a big if, you are the person that all our people trust most in their hearts. Maybe you could be king yourself, eh? You're popular enough. Me? In charge? <laughs> well, that's the last thing this country needs. Right, let's review what we know, shall we? First, the new faces that have appeared on the rock. It shows us who's foremost in the running. We've worked out that much. 
The top three of the lot are also shown in the sky. Suppose that way you can see their inspiring faces anytime, anywhere. Hold on. How's us common folks supposed to stand a chance against all these upper crusters? Say you do become popular. With your face clear for all to see, surely that'd make you a prime target for assassination. Not quite, friend. Not quite. A valid concern, but one His Majesty prepared for. Popular aspirants, at least those who make it onto the rock, are protected by royal magic. Assassinations off the table. Magic chains will spring to life and bind anyone who tries. I saw it happen with my own eyes to Count Luis's sorry assailant. So, literally anyone could be king? Even a pauper? Or a slave? Or a criminal? But hold on, you mean to say we might not be ruled by Clamar? What does that mean for us? Right, I've said my piece. You know all I know. Now go forth, ladies and gents, and spread the word! Whether you're from our fair capital, or the middle of nowhere, the crown's within your grasp. Anyone in the land could be our next king! I heard the announcement. The church has chosen to recognize this face's words as crown sent and shall abide by them. They conceded that one quickly. Though I suppose it's a hard thing to deny, what with the royal palace hanging up there in the clouds. Had they rushed a coronation for his eminence, Forden, it would have dashed any hope of reinstating his highness. A small comfort. I can tell from your face there's some bad news too. Do you recall those chains that froze Alsace in place? It seems that too was part of His Majesty's magic. Plainly, any candidates of sufficient favor cannot be deposed by force. That's not good. No, tis not indeed. This marks Luis as nigh untouchable. I will still seek to find him. Yet, even should we stand before the man himself, we could not kill him. No! If we can't kill him, then how do we break the curse? What the hell was the king thinking? Grius was trying to save his son. He died for it. Even so, without this magic, no aspirant would be safe from assassination, leaving Luis to dominate through sheer martial strength. <sighs> we appear to be at an impasse. Everyone, have you seen Maria? Did something happen? I checked her room and she isn't there. She wouldn't just leave without telling anyone. I... I couldn't deal with losing both of them. I... I'll go look for her. You... you will? Thank you. When I think of what might happen to her... If she left her room on her own, she must have had some reason. Let's go search for her. If we head into town, we might find some clues. Where? You're kidding me! <sighs> Whatever. Of ideas. Ah. <laughs> what should I do? What's going on? Now then, it's in. Keep 
I'm here to get you. Come on, let's go. <sighs> okay. Papa hasn't come home. And I always come here whenever I'm feeling lonely. One time he came here to get me. I remember because he called my name. But I pray. And he still doesn't come back. Maybe because the cathedral is broken? Maria. Miss Fabian says Papa can't come home anymore. But I know... Papa's gone away. He's gone somewhere I'll never see him again. Hasn't he? <sighs> it's... It's going to be so lonely. The loneliest it's ever been. But... I have to be strong, don't I? But if it gets any lonelier, I... I don't know if I can do it. I'm sorry. I promised we'd all come back together. Why does everyone always leave? Mum was sick. The King and Prince are gone. And now Papa? Why does everyone always leave? Is it my fault? I really did my best to be a good girl, but... That's not why. He's right, Maria. It's not your fault at all. Listen to me, all right? Your father, he... He was fighting a very bad man. We were with him, but... We couldn't protect him. I'm sorry. I remember Papa saying something like that. He said... A really bad man might be our king. Is that part of it? It'll work out somehow. I'm sure of it. Hmm. I hope the next king is as nice as you. Then maybe things won't always be so sad. Mm. I think I understand the king's intentions now. Maybe this is the sort of tragedy he was trying to end. Maybe he wanted a world where the crown goes to one who acts like a king ought to. Not whoever's willing to spill the most blood to do it. You may be right, but much as we wish it, this is not a fight that might be ended through words alone. Even so, we have to try. Worried sick. I'm sorry for leaving on my own. No, it's all right. Miss Fabienne. I am hungry. Maria. Yes, that's right. Let's all sit down for some supper together. Thank you for finding her. It looks like she's worked things out. She's a strong girl. But we've more troubles ahead. How now do we resolve this curse upon his highness? If Luis is the curse's caster, we've got to kill him to dispel it. So how do we do that if he's shielded by the king himself? I wish I could report back, but the prince is still asleep and we're losing time. I don't think going back to the village is an option. We cannot lose faith yet. There must be some further course we can pursue. Well, there's the church's announcement. I expect they're trying to stop a wave of rival candidates from flooding the standings. I doubt the church would accept this popularity contest if they didn't already have a plan to game it. True enough. I can only wonder at their aims. For today, we should content ourselves with rest and recovery. <sighs> oh. 
Sorry, did I wake you? Laying here, I always end up caught in my own thoughts. Grius and Maria. The prince. <sighs> Just thinking in circles again. Not good, is it? Let's think about it together. <laughs> Keeping me company, are you? <laughs> you really are a strange one. My kind of strange, if I'm honest. That book, is that the novel you're always carrying around? <laughs> Feels like months ago now that I spotted you buried in it on the carriage ride to the fort. Wanna read it? If you don't mind, since we finally some room to breathe. Interesting. It's written through the lens of a fictional land. This bit's about the utopia's security. In this world, there is no blood-stained contest for sovereignty. The people choose their sovereign from among themselves. One cannot put a sovereign to the sword to seize power. Such an act would be met with scorn and judged as murder. Taking power or wealth by force is seen as the most shameful of transgressions. <laughs> Couldn't be further from reality, could it? We have a Kingslayer on the brink of seizing the throne right now. And this idea of competing for public support. Here it sounds so commonplace, but the idea has thrown us all into chaos. Interesting. Perhaps I'm overthinking, but it sounds almost like the aim of the King's magic. You suppose there's some common inspiration? Still, I don't imagine this would turn out well in the real world. In public opinion, tribal perspective always divides us. Besides, does a decision made by the people guarantee its right? Tribal squabbles aren't always political. Take us Clamars, for example. It can be hard for us to see outside the bubble of our own worldview. We're the majority, and the tribe of the royal bloodline besides. That privilege can make us insensitive. A problem with no easy solution, I fear. Lofty words. I can hardly come to terms with my own ideals. Still, the discussions helped clear my head a little. Thank you. I've been so fixated on killing Luis, but... Maybe we could look into whether that's really the only way to lift the curse. <sighs> Sleep should come easier now. I think I'll give it another chance. Wait, how long have you been asleep? Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Ladies and gents, have you heard the news? The curtain's about to rise on the show of a lifetime! To choose our new ruler, we're going to give all of you a chance to take center stage in a show of power for the whole kingdom. And we call it the Tournament for the Throne. Our aspirants will set out on a grand tour of the three allied nations' capitals, taking part in a variety of exciting trials. First, we have the Exhibition of the Brave. Slay a monster plaguing our fair people and bring its head to Oceana's capital in time. Biggest find takes the win. Official word is, this event's open to all. So what do you think, ladies and gents? Are you in it to watch or in it to win? Stroll, why call us so early in the morning? What is that journal? I had Fabienne bring it up. Something occurred to me, so I asked her to go through Grius's personal effects. Hey, looks like he was investigating the curse too. There's a note here. Given the spell's complexity, it must have required a scribed formula. You mean to suggest... Luis possesses a written composition of the curse somewhere. And if we can find that... Yes! I'd wager, even if we can't kill Luis, we might still have a shot at breaking the curse. Attack took place years ago, didn't it? This curse's formula could be lost for good. We have little choice but to hope it's not. I'm not saying it will be easy. And the real trick will be finding it. We wouldn't leave it unprotected. 
That reminds me. A crier for the church was handing these out. A flyer for the Tournament for the Throne. This popularity contest is state-sponsored now. An interesting gamble for those politicians. I like the bit about all this being in the interest of fairness, those weasels. But saying it's being organized by the state. The throne's empty. This smells like the theocracy at work. Probably Forden himself. You think Forden's looking to fix the competition in his favor? He's been in first place this whole time. In the interest of fairness, remember? If he wins a fair race, he gets legitimized, and Luis gets put on the back foot. That bodes ill. Those with existing support could easily solidify their claim. Even should His Highness wake, he may lose the throne. If we don't hurry and find a way to get close to Luis, we're sunk. Ah, what are we supposed to do? Let's enter this tournament for the throne. Huh? Hey, were you even listening to us? Besides, the prince isn't exactly in a position to take part in- Wait! It sounds crazy, but I think he might be onto something there. This could be just the excuse we need to get close to Luis. He doesn't care about your tribe so long as you prove capable, yes? That's what Zorba was saying. Which means, even though the world looks down on you as an elder, having the power to kill humans puts you in his good graces. You're going to make him a candidate for the throne? If all we need to do is get Luis's attention, then that's sure to get the job done. If we're lucky, he might even try to recruit us. I see. An undercover operation, is it? Quite a gambit. But it may well be our best chance at finding this formula. Just hold on a second! Getting Luis's attention is all well and good. But remember who's actually risking their life here. What do you think? Having heard all this, do you want to enter the running? Of course I do. No hesitation at all? Right. In my ideal world, People can believe in their future. Their birth doesn't matter. No matter who someone is, they deserve a fair country. If it's to help achieve that, I will stand for the prince as a candidate for the throne. Sheesh. So much for being a guide. Now you're the one leading me around. Your resolve has marked you a fine fit for the role. I have trusted you with my life before, and would gladly do so again. Good heavens. Haven't you put yourself in enough danger? Listen to me. I don't want you going down the same path he did. Are you really this set on running off again? Yes. I've got a job to- Oh. Familiar words. I'll be cheering for you in this mess of a competition. Truth be told, I wish I could do more than feed and shelter you. What's the- Competition. It's a big, grand race to see who will be the next king. The whole country will be watching. So you're going to try and become king? Wow! Then I'll cheer for you as loud as I can. <laughs> you have your first advocate, it seems. Suppose you'll have to actually try for the throne now, eh? Your Majesty. That was the plan from the start. <laughs> That's the spirit. Well, if we want Luis to notice you, we'll have to make quite a stir among the people. Maybe reaching for the throne will do it. Does that mean you're not coming back? No, we'll be back. Although we might be a while. <sighs> I don't like when it gets lonely. Maria. But I'll be cheering for you. I hope you win the race. You'd be a good king. Thank you for your support. Yeah! Now, we best get registration out of the way, but we'll need some legs for the journey. 
It's mostly lawless wastes between cities. Judging by this specified deadline, we're unlikely to reach the Principality of Oceana's capital in time on foot. I bet all these fancy nobles have their own gauntlet runners to ride in. A carriage might save our chances, if we could find one. Perhaps we split up for now. I'll leave you two to the registration. They should be taking entrance at the recruitment center. This should be the place. Excuse us. We're looking to join the tournament. Hey, be young, ain't ya? And who's the kid? Be with you. I'm the one entering. You? Really? I've not heard of any age restrictions. There a problem? Well, I'd not have thought it. But you're an elder, ain't ya? And you want to be king. Well, the novelty of it might win you some looks. Could you just do your job, please? Can he register or not? Ah, oh, an elder. Now that I think of it, weren't you in that pack of recruits that went off to the northern fort? Thought I heard they were all wiped out. What? We got a deserter turning up. No, they said he'd just dragged the company down, so they left him at the capital. He, um, got on the captain's bad side. Could swear I've seen you before, too. Well, hardly matters without captain to verify it with. Go on, then. You can represent the lesser tribes, so nobody complains. <sighs> and, uh, obviously, you're gonna need a carriage. Otherwise, the whole thing's off for you. You're obligated to attend the opening ceremony tomorrow. It'll be at the plaza at the Grand... We'll have to hope Hulkenberg can find us a carriage. As for us, I expect we should see about finding a monster to slay. If it's not impressive enough, Luis won't look twice at you. Some postings over there. They should be offering bounties on monsters the guard can't handle. Like everyone else had the same idea. One of these bounties is bound to make me stand out. But which? Bigger is probably better. Hang on! There's nothing but small time contracts here. Are you lot here for this tournament then? It's slow, I'm afraid. Most of my worthiest monster bills have already been snapped up by other competitors. How about requests on anything aside from monsters? Bounties include criminals too, right? Hmm. I suppose I've got one of those, yeah. Hmm, let's see. Well, he's horrible. Heisme, a villainous kidnapper. Looks like the army's been trying to catch him for a while now. This might just be perfect. Whoa, do you have any idea who that is? That man's an elite. An ex-royal knight, they say. He'd make short work of a scrawny little urchin, you can be sure of that. Besides, didn't you hear what it is they're actually looking for? Oh, of course. It's about whoever can bring in the biggest monster head, right? If you imbeciles can't even get that straight, you've no chance at winning. They want kingly types, not children play-acting. Stuck-up little... Is that the kind of competition we can expect? He was right about the rules, though. What are you thinking? Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. We're supposed to get a monster's head. So why are you going for a criminal? Any idea what he's up to? Maybe this criminal has a really big head? Come on, that's a stretch. And if he had a gigantic head, you'd think they'd mention it in the contract. Don't worry, I'll explain everything. As long as you can convince Hulkenberg, I guess. Hold oh, there! Are you really taking the bounty on Heisme? <laughs> you three must be heaven sent. Please, would you listen to our plight? You're Barton. Gentlemen, I'm Barton. A guard captain for Matira, a town to the south. 
The bounty on Heismere is up at my behest. A guard captain? This fellow's made some powerful enemies. We can't afford lenience. On top of his past crimes, Heismere has stooped to abducting our wee ones. Our children. Selling them off, some say. If our city becomes known for nightly disappearances, what sane resident would stay? Community and trade will dwindle and die. But he's just a lone kidnapper, right? Even if he's some infamous criminal, why can't the guard handle it? That's the trouble. He makes us hide out somewhere too dangerous for our soldiers to tread. Deep in the territory of vicious giant worms. We've no idea how he manages to operate out there without getting devoured himself. I see. Tricky problem indeed. I had no choice but to swallow my pride and post a bounty. Yet no matter how many times I renew the bill, none have taken it. A pitiful sight, isn't it? A soldier who can't protect his home, whether by strength or by surrender. Laugh if you must. We just want to help you. You only cast away your honor in the name of protection. Nothing pitiful in that. Swallow your... Ah, thanks to you. That you'd accept such a perilous request. Even closure. Thank you all. And thank God for bringing you to me. In that case, we shall meet in Matira, the old castle town. Please, make haste. Well, no backing out of this now. You sure this is what we want? The way I see it, if we want to make a big impact this late, it's going to take some creativity. Besides, this is apparently a knight-turned-kidnapper. The man can't be allowed to go on. What would His Royal Highness do in our place? I guess that's fair. I'll convince Hulkenberg. Somehow. You go on and accept the contract. Thank you. No registration issues, I trust? No, indeed. And we found ourselves a perfect target. Fine work. Stroll? See? She's convinced. Nothing to worry about. Don't worry about it. I'll prepare a map of the surrounding areas as well. But never mind that. Have you found us a kingly carriage? Well, I have made some arrangements. How best to put it? The vessel itself is without peer. Supposedly, it will come to us on the day of the opening ceremony. I... Uh, you don't sound too sure about that. Oh, uh, no, I'm certain. All I mean to say is, well... You shall soon see for yourself. Well, under the circumstances, I'll take what we can get. And setting that up in a day? Not so bad having a knight on our side. <laughs> you needn't speak so... In truth... I've just resigned from the Knight's Order. Though it is only my bond of service, I relinquish, not my title. We will shortly be seeking Luis's esteem. Should it come to light that I am a Knight in active service, it may jeopardize our efforts. Still, you didn't hesitate to leave. I can tell you're serious about this. It was not an abrupt parting. I've come to doubt the Order since returning to find them serving the Santifex and not the Royals. Those who refused the Church's rule were cast out for their defiance. I only hope those fallen knights found useful employ elsewhere. Sounds like you've been through a lot too. Well, in any case, we can focus on our bounty contract now. Hmm. Let's 
Let's rest. Fancy a bit of info? Now then. Hello. <laughs> Don't push yourself too much. Hey! Well met, eh? tomorrow, right? I'll be cheering for you. So, I... I... I just... Oh no! I promised Miss Fabian I wouldn't cry. It's alright. I won't tell her. Pavel was trying to stop a bad man, you said. And that's what you're all doing too, isn't it? Please come back home safe. I'll be waiting here as long as it takes. It's a promise. All right. Promise? The next time I see you again, can you tell me more about the outside world? This one's important. I never got a chance to say this to Papa. So, thank you. I'll go to bed now. Captain. May I have a moment? Good night. I was hoping for a chance to speak before we set out. Since our meeting, I've done nothing but impose on you. Now, you risk your very life for this cause. It is no easy burden. It pains me to see. When I think of how this may yet save His Highness, I lose sight of all else. Such disregard ill becomes me. Don't worry about it. Tis kind of you to say. But that book, we met once before, on a carriage bound for the capital. Do you recall? Now that you mention it, I do. My apologies. I thought only to minimize casualties one way or another. So, tis a novel envisioning an ideal world. Curious to see a utopian novel these days. I'd thought them long since banned. Ah, you needn't worry. I've no intention of taking it from you. I've sometimes wondered why such books were forbidden. Rumors say the Sanctists objected to their contents. Yet I wonder, how could a simple book have possibly stunned them so? Do you mind if I read a passage or two? So, it is a fiction written as if a personal account. This chapter seems to concern the system by which the nation's leader is decided. In this country, one cannot become even a statesman, much less sovereign, without the consent of the people. Those who aspire to statecraft must first solemnly swear before the people what they will do in service of their country. Should they earn title but break their word, they are denounced and stripped of power. Such is the authority of the people. 
In this way, it is the people who are the land's true king. Quite the opposite of our own country. Now I see why our upper echelons would abolish such texts. Had our lands embraced such accountability, perhaps His Royal Highness would not have suffered such a fate. No. As a knight, it's not my place to say. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. Oh, I suppose. It is not so bad to dream now and then. It takes power to walk the path of our dearest hopes. Perhaps that is the purpose of this newfound strength. My dearest dream. Tis to save His Highness, even at the cost of my life. Nothing more. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Even I'm feeling the heat. Well, I suppose it's time to fan the flames. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to the inauguration of the Tournament for the Throne. For the first time, the crown is anyone's to claim, as long as the aspirants can complete three grueling challenges. Wow, a Sanctus Crier. He's perfect for this. Let's discuss the venues. We kick off in the west, in the Pearl of the Coast, the Principality of Oceana's harbour city capital, Port Brylhaven. There, they face their first challenge, the Exhibition of the Brave. Each contender must bring back the head of a monster, a mark of their prowess and courage. Next, our would-be monarchs head east. Upon the misty peaks, we arrive in the Principality of Montario's beautiful city of faith, Alterbury Heights. And finally, our heroes make their well-deserved return home to Grand Trad. But first, let's do introductions. It's time to meet those risking their lives for the crown. Closest to the throne, I know him, you know him. It's Sanctism's one and only 78 Sanctifex, His Eminence, Forden! Victory to Sanctifex Forden! I claim no great ambition, nor any heated calls to action. All I wish is to restore order for our people and to safeguard our land from the threats beyond. This chaos we face is but one of God's many trials. 
Let us restore our kingdom's glory together! Moving right along, we come next to His Eminence's champion, the very spear in his hand, the warrior monk captain of the Crown Theocracy, Master Gido! I come before you only in loyal service of His Eminence. I relinquish the throne to him gladly. But those who would seize the crown by force, I will teach you to fear God and to fear me! So much for this being a fair competition. How many horses do the Sanctus have in this race? Still, it's not over by far. The Luis supporters won't take this lying down. What cowardice, Prior! Where's Count Louise? Right, all right, settle down! At this time, I can report that Count Luis has not applied to enter the tournament. What? He's not even entering? Then what becomes of us? Our entire purpose in this race was to get closer to him. Don't worry. He's definitely paying attention. He's only in second as it is, so we can't afford to ignore this whole production. Sit tight. I'm sure he'll make a move soon. All right, all right. For those Count Louis supporters, you might want to meet our next entrant. A rising socialite, a man of ambition, godless and fearless, the brash young warrior serving Count Louis, Gladell, the Black Hound. <laughs> Him? So he was one of Louis's men. The fallen king embraced sanctism and all its holy tenants, and for what? He was nothing before Lord Luis. Look to the sky all you wish. No god can save you! What our country needs is power! Well, it's not quite all the contenders, but let's get on with the introductions. The great liberal merchant, it's Roger Ward. By war, by conquest, by right, it's Rudolf Krauss. In it more for the gauntlet runners than the throne, it's Lena Caden. Sure to be popular by pledging free drinks for life, it's Loveless O'Shea. Uplifting the beautiful and deposing the hideous, it's Milo Maurizio. Wow, uh, if we lose this, I think the country has some even bigger problems. <sighs> Now, I do believe we have one final candidate. Do we have an Elden Boy present? Come on, huh? let's see your face. What? An Elder? Disgraceful. Is this the only way you could think to distinguish yourself? <clears throat> by the way, the ride you applied with still hasn't arrived. And uh, if it doesn't show up by the time the noon bell rings, you're disqualified. All right? Hey! What's going on? That nitwit! What is he doing? <sighs> so! Contestants, are you ready? <laughs> what? Last, I say! Wait! How'd you behave? A land runner? It's quick! Wait, it's headed right for the. It'll crash! Whoa! <coughs> what the heck is that? Oh, so much for a first impression. What the hell? Isn't he a marvel, chums? You don't! You nearly brought down the cathedral! Oof. Have a care, you fool. It was bad enough when Luis did it the first time. That feckless, shameless old fool! Not bad, kid. I guess you've got some interesting tricks up your sleeve after all. Right! I'd call that a full roster! Ladies and gentlemen, race across the land! Go! Prove yourself worthy and earn your crown! For 
the people, for the throne! Let the games begin! We must take to the road! Come on! Come on! Oh. It's incredible! This is amazing! I don't know a thing about gauntlet runners, but even I can tell this is a hell of a craft. I can hardly believe she's ours to drive. You're telling me that! Feels like ages since I've been out on the open road! This girl's been waiting long enough for her time to shine. So this is what you use to talk with the driver? Convenient, that. Look, old fellow, are you really on our side? You realize we don't have funds to pay you. Money? Ah, I'm not in this for the money, boy. What I want is a little gusto. What do you think, that? Isn't this a rush? It is at that. Like riding the wind. That's the ticket. <laughs> it's been so long since I've had a good chinwag. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. You've a good head on your shoulders, boy. Yes, I can tell you're a sharp one. We're two ladies. The world is our shellfish. <laughs> you certainly are a different person behind the wheel. Hey, Hulkenberg. Can we get an explanation yet? That man is Neurus. An Ishkia, if it was not obvious from the wings. And despite... <laughs> everything. He was heir to a noble house and personal machinist for the royal family. What? He's a master engineer, of course, positively peerless. But as you can see, the runners get him a bit... <laughs> excitable. Neuras? Are you there? I'm coming in. <laughs> Even amidst all this commotion in town, I find you buried in your work. Ah, it's too much to do. As always. To business then, I must ask a favor. Would you be able to ready a carriage for me? No new commissions, no time for them. Ask another right. It is not a new one I require. Before His Highness disappeared, did you not accept a contract to build him a custom carriage? <laughs> Without a formal owner, I reasoned that it must now lie unused. I was hoping I might borrow it a short while. But, uh, pish 
and tosh, woman. She is for royal use and naught else. Tis an unreasonable request, I know. But I'd not be asking without a grave need. Might I at least see it? Ah, uh, I mean, well, um... Twas specially made for his highness, yes. Not a work you'd have sold off. Where lies it now? I, I've deadlines to meet, dash it. Off with you now, leave me be. You've been acting stranger than usual. What ails you? Runner, the very craft commissioned for His Highness the Prince. Even knowing His Highness was gone, still you toiled away. Oh, Nuras, you are an inspiration. Such nobility of purpose. Um, yes. <laughs> right. However, for a craft meant for the royal family, it is rather excessive, isn't it? Did you... Really? Built this vehicle exactly to their orders? <laughs> you cannot mean... Well, at first, it was certainly, I followed the blueprints exactly. But then His Highness died and... Uh, well, I, I couldn't just let the old girl waste away. A masterpiece like her? Collecting dust in storage? No! Unacceptable! Unthinkable! <sighs> I'm working toward a dream. And this... This poor old girl is going to help me see it through. And then, finally... You imbecile! A lonely, brazen court engineer butchering His Highness's inheritance for a hobby! For this... Mania! You embezzled the royal treasury and disrespected his legacy! Treason! Ah, ah, mercy, please! Look, take my head if you must, milady, but leave the value runner alone! Look, this runner... It is fully operational now, is it? Then I suggest you cooperate, for both our sakes. Finish your tinkering by tomorrow and bring it to the Grand Cathedral as soon as you can. Eh? What's all this now? You play the proud soldier at me and then pluck it for your own schemes? Tis no scheme! I would use it for His Highness's sake. For His Highness, eh? Hold a tick. Haven't you been looking for him? Wandering across God knows where last I heard? So if you're back now and... And now you want a gauntlet runner for His Highness? Is... Is His Highness still alive? That's it! I've got you, haven't I? Twas His Highness who gave you refuge while you were only a heretical scholar condemned by the Sanctists. The time has come to repay His mercy. Understood. Is that enough? Can this old duck really handle an undercover operation? I know what you're thinking, but tis at least true that he feels an undying debt of gratitude to the royal family. Pish and tosh, boy! A little faith. Not to brag, but this old duck's craft might be the fastest gauntlet runner in the kingdom. Why, probably the world. I think. Maybe. How encouraging. All I want is to push this runner as far and as fast as she can go. Show her off to the world. And you? Well, I presume you'd rather work together than have to walk, eh? I don't know about this, but I guess we'll just have to trust him. What do you think? I think we can count on him. If you're sure, I suppose. We'll deal with it if we have to. Either way, he knows the prince is alive so we can't just leave him to his own devices. We're all in the same boat. 
or runner, I guess. If you're not gonna have fighting, and I'll handle all the driving and grease work. Just make sure you've got a proper plan for all this mess now. This guy's got no filter. But he has a point. We do need to talk strategy. So, summing up. Our first trial is to slay a monster. We take its head as proof, then get it to the goal line before the deadline. The bigger the head, the better. Our destination is Port Brylehaven, the capital of the Western Principality of Oceana. It'd be a trek on foot, but this gauntlet runner should make it a snap. So getting the bounty's head is our next move. And our target is a nefarious criminal who's been kidnapping and selling off children. Right? A criminal? Did the task not specify a monster's head? Don't worry. All part of the plan. We don't need to win this thing. We just need to get Luis's attention. Everyone's going to show up with monster heads, and we shake things up with a felon. A knight turned kidnapper at that. Shows them we're there for justice. But to deliberately violate the rules, we risk being disqualified entirely. Then again, tis just as likely to win the people's attention and thereby Luis's. I do understand the intent. What do you think of this plan? I trust all of you completely. Good enough for me. A captain's got to trust his crew, after all. The bounty's Heismay, an ex-knight. I realize that's a little close to home, Hulkenberg, so if you'd rather hang back... No. His title is precisely why I cannot let his atrocities stand. And yet... It is strange indeed that we are hunting a mere man when the trial marms a monster. Then again, our true aim is beyond the ambitions of any other aspirant. Our fate rests in this plan of yours, Stroll. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll try to ensure your trust isn't misplaced. Right, huh? Then our course is set. Feel free to use anything in the gauntlet runner. Even got a bathing room if you could use a wash. Good to know. We can always look around more thoroughly later. Yes. You needn't tire yourself out before we arrive. Well, I'm a tinkerer and not much else. All my fighting happens in the old workshop. But I'll take you wherever you're going for your sake and mine. After all, the wilds out there are no very picnic. Oh no. It's a den of wild beasts and savage scoundrels. And we'll not get past it without days on the road together. So, if you need anything besides a steady hand on the wheel, give me a hoot. Bound to find me in the cockpit or the engine room. <laughs> He's certainly an eccentric. But he doesn't seem like a bad person. We'll get used to him. I suppose. Concludo qui il mio video. Se volete seguirmi, iscrivetemi al canale.